up? My name is Megan. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new and welcome to, to this week's vlog. Why was that so hard to say? Today is Tuesday, May 9th and am I supposed to be at work? Technically this was supposed to be my first week working full-time now that I am done with school. However, as I spoke about in last week's vlog, which I'll link up here if you guys have not seen it, I injured my back yet again and I ended up going to the ER on Sunday night and I am out of work for at least a week, crossing my fingers that with the meds and everything I was given, I am okay to go back to work next week. But essentially, uh, I don't know, I sprained my back, I think that's what it is in English. I have a Renato Slobai. Basically, I deal with chronic back pain ever since I got injured at the end of 2019. And so my doctor said it will probably happen a lot more frequently for me than the general population. Uh, did I cry a little bit about it? Yes. Um, but we are moving on to hopefully bigger and better things because I'm so done with going to the hospital. Every month of May since 2020 has been hospitalizations, uh, injuries. It's been a whole thing. I'm really, I'm over it by now. But that means I cannot do much because I am in a lot of pain without pain meds and my pain meds also make me sleepy. So we're starting a reading vlog because obviously I can't do much more than read this week. We have the 24 hour readathon for Steph's Formula One readathon she started doing on her Patreon on Saturday. So I know at the end of last week's vlog I mentioned starting Skandar and the Phantom Rider, which most anticipated book of the, the year. I'm 60 pages in and this is like a heavy five-star prediction. However, this fulfills a lot of the prompts for the readathon and it's also a very quick read. So I'm going to wait until Saturday to read it and I'm assuming by Saturday I'm going to feel better, um, which will also make this experience more enjoyable because I've been waiting for a year for this. If you don't know, it is the sequel of Skandar and the Unicorn Thief. And I'm also going to keep Nick Blake and the Remarkables for that 24 hour readathon as well because uh, we are doing the Montreal Grand Prix and that is my Grand Prix, it is where I am from and the theme for that, like the overarching theme is the name of a character or the name of a person within the title. So Nick Blake and the Remarkables gets me those 10 points, as does Skandar and the Phantom Writer, which also gives me 10 points with all the other points I can stack up on top. So those are the two books from my May TBR I'm going to keep for the weekend. I don't know if it's going to be a separate vlog to this. We shall see. But that means that I had to kind of reset what I'm currently reading. I'm still listening to the audiobook for Listen to Your Heart by Casey West, still 40% in. Um, and I decided to pick up a physical book which is founded on temptation. We were disturbed, so I'm sorry that clip cut abruptly, but I was, as I was saying, I picked it up, I picked it up, I picked up Founded on Temptation by Kate Singleton. This is the second book in the mixtape series. I had read the first book in this series, I think in 2021, and I had made a whole video about it, um, which I can leave in the cards if you guys wanted to see, but that first book was a five star, and so when I picked this up as a prompt for my Candyland TBR, this was... Gloves and steering wheel, read a book you've been desperate to get your hands on because once I finished that book, which was like an immediate five stars, I really wanted to get my hands on the second book. This follows um, the best friend of the female main character of the first book as well as the bodyguard of the main male character in the first book. I am 108 pages in or on chapter 17 and very honestly, I am not loving this as much as the first book. Um, and within the first 40 pages, I was like, do I just DNF this? Um, it's gotten a little bit better, but it has a lot of the tropes and things I don't like 
uh, within books or within my own personal life and I think that reflects on my enjoyment of this book because this basically starts out as like our two main characters meeting and having a one night stand and our main male character usually only does one night stands but then um, the entirety of the first 100 pages is basically them meeting twice and having relations twice and we also are in this book like this the plot of this book starts at like the three quarters of the first book so like we're rehashing the same plot with just like different perspectives and I did not know that so I don't know how I feel about like bringing back that drama that's kind of resolved at the end of book one with different perspectives and it's just a lot of them pining for each other and being sexually attracted to each other and there's a lot of sexual tension but there's not a lot of plot and not a lot of character development I am not a particular fan of either one of them because they're just not the kind of people I would get along with in real life so it's hard for me to like either of one within like the context of this book. Not that I have anything against people who do one night stands or whatever it's just not relatable for me how you can be like super attracted to someone um and just constantly think about them when you've like slept with them twice but don't even know anything about their life so not the biggest fan it, it feels like a two and a half three stars as of now but it is a short book so I will keep going and then I'll see if I want to venture into more of the series or if it's just like the first book was a hit and we leave it at that so I'm gonna continue reading because my back hurts while doing this update and I will catch you guys later This is the face of outrage and disappointment. Oh uh, boy, you guys. I know it looks like no time has passed, but it's past 6 p.m. And I want to throw this book in a garbage disposal. I want to burn it. I want to uh, bury it in the ground. I want to wipe it out of my memory. This. I don't know if this is my first star ever, one star ever. This got one star. It's my first one star in a couple of years. And did I expect this to go this way? Did I expect all this negativity at the beginning of the vlog? Absolutely not. I cannot believe what the fuck this book was. I'm honestly outraged that I could get such a five star happy giddy feeling reading that first book and despise a book as much as I despise this book. So we got a five stars and a one stars in the series. And I don't know what the hell I'm gonna do with the rest. Good thing I haven't purchased them, but uh, this book, I, on my last update when I was like 100 pages in, I was like, it's probably like a 2.53 stars. And then around the 150 page mark, I was like slowly warming up to the characters where it could have been like, at at a maximum of three star but like I could kind of get some vibes they did get to know each other a tiny bit more but it's it was a very superficial re relationship with no rhyme or reason as to how they really fell in love to me it didn't make sense and then the worst trope in romance we all agree collectively what the worst trope in romance is right was put into this book and I could not fucking believe my eyes when I read that, I was outraged. I hate read, speed read the end of this, and I don't understand. Like what, what, what is the reason? How does any of this make sense? I cannot believe it was in this book. I cannot believe she chose to do this with this couple. I wanna puke, I wanna die. What star, I'm getting rid of this. That was such a waste of money. I'm so mad. If I would have known, I would have bought something else off my TBR. But I thought it was a sure thing. Clearly, with the prompt it was supposed to fill. Like a book you've been desperate to get your hands on. I take it back. I don't know what I'm gonna read now, so we might put out the pull out the candy land board or just pick up a, a random prompt in one of my jars, but I, I need a minute. 
and I will come back when I'm not as dramatic. I have had some food and put on some pajamas and we're gonna pick my next books because I'm just in such a bad mood after reading that book that like I need I need something else. Now the, the question is do I pick from my regular mug or the Formula One readathon mug? I think I'll do this because the aim of the game is to finish this before the end of the readathon in November and I got a late start. So let's pick a prompt. This is exciting. Let's go for this one. Ooh. Lifestyle of the Rich and Famous. A read a book with a celebrity or wealthy characters. Do, what do I want to read that has that vibe? So, two things immediately came to mind with this prompt. One is this book here, which I don't even think I hauled on my channel, but I've had for a, a while. And this is like a love song by Gabriella Martins. This is like fake dating, uh, celebrity romance. It's basically everything I love in a book. It does appear to be, like it's by Underline, so I'm not sure if this is a YA book, but it's super short, uh, sounds very cute. And my other option is Starbright by Susanna Nix, and this is the third book in the Starstruck series. I have raved about the first two books in this series. This one is shorter, it's more like a, almost like a novella length because it's only like, it's not even 200 pages. But I'm not sure I want to go back into this world right now because if I read this then I want to read the last book in the series and I'm not ready for the series to be over because I love the first two books so much. And I've been burned clearly by that last book which could have worked for this prompt but I don't even want to talk about that book anymore like I put it back on my shelf and I'm just ignoring it. So I think we're gonna go with like a love song by Gabriella Martins and yeah it says Natalie is living her dream topping the charts setting records as a Brazilian pop star until she's dumped spectacularly on live television so her PR team is getting to her to date this boy. I don't know what he does, but uh, oh, he's a British indie film star, I think. This sounds interesting and like a very bingeable read. So we're gonna go with this. Love that for us. A little bit of uh, a wild card in this vlog. So catch you guys later. I feel like I'm just all over the place today, but don't mind me. Thank you. Wednesday. I swear I changed. I'm not wearing the same dress. <sighs> it is Wednesday, right? Yeah. The back is starting to feel a tiny bit better with the meds, so that's good. But I wanted to update you guys because I finished the entirety of Like a Love Song by Gabriella Martins, which I picked out yesterday. I read like 160 pages yesterday and I finished it off this morning. It's just shy of like 300 pages and I ended up enjoying this a lot. I ended up giving it a 3.75 stars. This is YA so I was right to assume it's from Underline, it's YA and it's written by a Brazilian author and the main character is Brazilian and I really loved the discussions on uh, what it is to be a Brazilian person in America and just everything that comes with it and the implications of racism and all of those things combined. There were a lot of discussions about that. Our main male 
character is British and it was just such a beautiful story. It was very soft. It is YA so there's no like steamy scenes but it's still a very adorable romance and I liked that our main character was kind of growing into accepting the fact that she's Brazilian and she has a lot of family who's still in Brazil and her relationship with them is a little bit complicated. So there were a lot of other things other than just her being famous and it was a very interesting thing to read about and the romance was adorable. I think that the conflict was well done, like it was kind of sprinkled out throughout and our main characters weren't apart for too long. Um, I think just the fact that it is YA and that it was so short made it like it's not like an all-time favorite read but I would highly recommend this if you're looking for like a diverse read to like encourage um, a Brazilian author. I just think it's it's a different perspective from a lot of the books I have read and this is actually blurbed by Nina Moreno who's the author of Don't Date Rosa Santos and Our Way Back to Always which I absolutely adore those books so we stand Nina Moreno as well. But yeah overall a really fun time. It was very easily like readable, very digestible and I'm very happy to have read this and it's put a better taste in my mouth than found it on Temptation, which we're still not, we're just gonna ignore that. Um, later on today I would like to show you guys the plants I got when I went to the garden center um, last week and also two books that I have hauled since the last log, but I thought we could pick a new prompt and read a new book because that's literally all I can do. So I think we're gonna take a break from the Formula One mug and pick out a general prompt for this one so we could go kind of back and forth. I'm saying that like I'm planning on reading 10 books in this vlog. I am not, but who knows. And I think this is like really making me pick up books that have been sitting on my shelf, like like a love song. I've had this book since like 2021 and I hadn't read it, so oh my god. Got a prompt. I will show you guys first. What does this say? A book that takes place in a school setting. Oh god. I'm gonna have to think this one through. I am staring at my shelves and it's like I don't I don't know what to pick you guys. And I'm sure that like I'm just panning you around and you might have seen like ten books that I should pick up. Okay friends, we scavenge the bookshelves and obviously I have a lot of choices. I just am looking at my bookshelf and I'm like, I don't know, like what is inspiring me at this current moment. But I think we're going to go with My Love Makes Up Volume 2. This is a manga series I started last year. Funnily enough, I got sent the first volume by mistake. Um, it was a whole thing with chapters that they sent the right, the wrong order, but I could keep what was in the order and the first volume was in there and I read it and I was like, holy crap, this is actually a really good manga. And so I went out and purchased volume two. These aren't super expensive for a manga. They're like $12 Canadian. So if I like this, I'm mostly gonna like put the next two on my wish list and then eventually get to buy them. Uh, but this is a story about, I think it's, like someone who had a crush on another classmate and they put their their name on the eraser and then the eraser is found by someone else and the other person is like thought to be the one who has a crush on that person and it creates this whole thing and like friendships and drama and everything kind of arise out of that situation and it was really funny and cute they're super like quick paced so I think I'm gonna go with this and I have some cleaning to do with the limited amount I can do with my back. Uh, and then I'm gonna sit down and maybe binge read this. And yeah, that's all I have to say. It's so weird holding manga and like reading it because I'm always so confused with the reading because I haven't read a lot, but I do enjoy it.
sure how bad the lighting for this clip is so bear with me i i brought you guys outside because i felt like reading and i read the entirety of my love mix up volume two outside it really didn't take me that long i will admit there was a little bit of a recap right here in the front and even with that it took me like maybe i don't know a little less than one third of the story to kind of get back in and remember who was who because in manga everything's in black and white and since i'm not used to reading it i oftentimes like confuse some of the characters but once i got back into it i really enjoyed it and they always end up not on the cliffhanger per se but like on a like on a note where i'm like i need to know what happens next and i think that's what's so great about manga is that it kind of keeps you um wanting to read more and I definitely do want to get more into manga and this is a series I feel like it's easy to get into if you've never read manga before like it's a really good introduction so I do want to get volumes three and four very soon I would have liked to get them before my trip when I leave that's about in like three and a half weeks um because I feel like they would be so easy to read on the beach but um we shall see because I, you know, I'm not working, so. But yeah, really enjoyed it. I'm giving it 3.5 out of 5 stars. I just think, you know, the first volumes, you kind of need to, like, let the story kind of unfold. I know there's, like, 9 or 10 volumes, I believe, in this manga, so definitely want to count you. Uh... Yeah, I've been really intrigued in uh, reading One Piece as well because I watched Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin and he's really into One Piece. And I've watched a few of his live shows with like Murphy and other people and it sounds like a really fun manga. And I also want to get um, that manga about a man and his cat as well as... There's, yes, Twilight Bound uh, because of Jade from JD Weary Reads. It sounds so fun. It's like a manga with like some mysteries and stuff. It sounds really fun. But I'm really enjoying myself outside. So I think we're going to go back in, pick another prompt, and then keep reading. Because I did a little bit of cleaning, but now my back tells me I need to stop. So we're going to stop and just read. Ready to pick the next book? I guess we go back to this jar. And make some more progress on this. I'll show you guys first. Ooh! Silly season. Read a book with a big twist slash reveal. Does this mean it's time to read a thriller? Yes, it is. I have been meaning to get to the tr thrillers I have left on my shelf because I'm not sure if I am or if I am not a thriller gal. I've sold most of the thrillers I own that I have read, but I got this one recently and I'm very excited. It is uh, The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. This I had got near my birthday. I got it for like $10. Um, instead of $37 Canadian and I had read the synopses while I was in the winners because that's where I got it and it sounded very intriguing. Uh, it's less than 300 pages? It's a short thriller. It's 290 pages. I don't want to spoil myself but I think this is what we're gonna go for. It's going to be my first Rachel Hawkins and I do own Reckless Girls by her as well, which I kind of hesitated between both of them, but I think I'm gonna go with this one, and if I like it, maybe I'll pick up Reckless Girls soon. So I'm gonna go back outside, bring a little blanket with me, and we're gonna read. I have no idea what this is about right now, so I can't tell you, but once I have an idea, I'll let you know. Also, can we take a second to appreciate my bookmark? It is so cute. So springy. Love the vibes. Kind of matches my dress. Wow. Hello. Welcome to my kitchen. I came in because one, my back was getting a little bit tired. Two, because I'm getting a little bit toasty and my bunnies needed to be able to roam a little bit more freely than their usual spots. So I came in, I opened the like the the windows and stuff so that they could enjoy the breeze. I imported all my footage. This vlog is already half an hour long of footage. 
It's only Wednesday. I've been vlogging for a day. Make it make sense. Anyways, I'm here to give you guys my, I guess my first impressions on the wife upstairs. This is a tricky one because it's not bad per se, but it's not excellent either. It's very middle of the road for me. Um, how many pages am I in? I'm on chapter 13, page 87. And basically, uh, I've met our main character who I despise. Um, she is made to be an unlikable character and an unreliable narrator. I just think that she is very petty and sketchy and those are not the kind of characters I like to read about. I do understand the, the purpose of having her as a main character and I'm assuming it's going to make the plot more relevant but I'm not a fan of being in, in her perspective and we also have the perspective of Bia who is the old wife like I'm gonna call her like that because I don't want to give too much away we have her perspective once in a while between chapters and that is interesting but again I'm very intrigued to see how all of that will tie together I have a feeling this plot is going to be sort of predictable which is I don't know which is maybe not it like maybe not it's not true and it's going to go in an entirely different way I just hope it doesn't end up being exactly what I think it is so I'm having an okay time but this is definitely not like a show-stopping thriller in my opinion and like the the writing style is fine the pace is fine but I'm just not like really down to discover what's happening like I, I wouldn't care if I put this book down and never picked it up like it wouldn't matter to me that I don't know how it ends so those are my thoughts I'm one third of the way through uh, I'm gonna try to finish this today because I don't think this is the kind of book that can be read over several days and I know once I put it down I'm not gonna want to put it back, pick it back up that was hard so yeah I'm gonna let my bunnies roam free start working on the vlog and Go back outside a little bit later and pick this up so those were my updates hello friends last update for the evening it's like past 7 p.m we're in the middle of making dinner i say we my partner is in the middle of making dinner but i wanted to update you guys because i did finish the wife upstairs by rachel hawkins and i really did not like this book um i gave it a 2.75 stars but even that I feel is generous. I feel like this might be a two star. Might have to change my reading. Um, I am very underwhelmed by this book. I feel like the plots and the twists and the reveals didn't make any sense and I hated our characters, all of them. Um, I wasn't rooting for anyone. I wasn't stressed. I didn't feel anything. I liked the writing style enough like it, it wasn't that terrible but I really did not like where the story went and just having so many unlikable characters to me doesn't make sense and I just feel like nobody would react the way these characters did and it just didn't make sense um, and I feel like we were pulling at threads that had not been weaved within the story and I was just left very unsatisfied so now I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with Reckless Girls if I'm gonna keep it on my shelves and read it and hope for the best or if I'm just gonna unhaul it as well so if you guys have read Reckless Girls and the Wife Upstairs tell me how they compare without spoiling anything although do I really care at this point anyways very underwhelmed but I wanted to pick out another book because I'm probably going to do some more reading this evening so I thought we'd pick from this jar together what is the prompt so this is Storygraph if it will focus so I'm gonna go on Storygraph Where's my phone? I'm gonna find my phone and go on Storygraph and go through on my TBR list and pick one of the five first books that pops up at random on my TBR list. Okay, let me screen record for you guys. 
Okay. Why did I click there? Let's see. To be red pile. Interesting choices. So we have Beauty of the Brush Rob, Powerless, All of Us Villains, X's and O's, and A Long Time Coming by Megan Quinn. So I can't read Powerless because it's the third book in the series. So I'm left with A Long Time Coming, X's and O's, All of Us Villains, and Beauty of the Brush Rob. Let me think this one through. So, out of the options, I might read either of these. I'm not sure if I'm in the mood for a romance, which is very odd for me to say. And I do have some like more video plans with this one. This one is more of a wild card on my TBR. The writing is tiny. But I'm not sure I'm going to like this one, although it's by Amanda Foodie. Um, I love Amanda Foodie. Not a big big fan of Christine Lynn Herman. So you know what? I think we're going to go with this one. See if I like it or not. See if I read it or DNF it. So. Love how none of the books I picked up this week I plan on reading anytime soon. So go TBR jar. Hello friends. It is Thursday afternoon. My back has been hurting a lot more today but I wanted to close out the vlog and just kind of wrap up my reading. Also you might hear the TV in the back. I do apologize. I have started All of Us Villains but I really did not get far. I read like 25 pages. I'm not sure how I'm gonna feel about this. The writing is very small and it's very um Confusing might not be the right word. I, I don't know how to describe how I'm feeling about this book yet So I'm gonna have to give it more time to see if I'm gonna finish or DNF um, I'm seeing a lot more of Christine Lynn Herman in this than I am Amanda Foody um, Which is why I'm very hesitant, but we will see um, I'm going to give myself to page 100 which we will see in the next vlog and see if I can't you or not because the premise sounds very intriguing I just don't know about the execution so this is going to be my currently reading for the beginning of the next vlog you guys are gonna see and I'm just qu quickly going to wrap up my reading so I read the second volume of my love mix up and I gave that 3.75 stars no 3.5 I gave it 3.5 stars I read Like a Love Song, and this I gave 3.75 stars. I read Founded on Temptation, which I gave one star. And my um, rating is going to be, I'm going to settle on a two star for The Wife Upstairs, because I really did not like it. I'm going to get rid of these two. The other two can stay on my shelf. So honestly, for like a two day reading vlog, we've made... Ugh, I need to get you some manga. We made some good progress on the TBR. Definitely things that I had for a while that I hadn't picked up. And, you know, we're trying new things. So, thank you so much for watching. Um, keep positive vibes from my back. Because it's a pain. And I will see you very soon with, like, part two slash continuation of this week. Bye, guys. Happy reading.